One of the front runners to replace Pope Benedict says the Catholic Church has a colossal job repairing the damage from child sex scandals. Cardinal Peter Turkson of Ghana is a potential candidate to replace Pope Benedict, who announced his resignation on Monday. He told Al Jazeera's Andrew Simmons the church had a credibility problem which needed to be repaired. Turbulence and division at the Vatican after only the second resignation of a pope in the 2,000-year history of the Roman Catholic Church. Beyond the crowds queuing outside St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican hierarchy is in overdrive, ahead of Pope Benedict's address to more than a billion Catholics due on Wednesday. There's no front-runner for his replacement. One of two black candidates, Cardinal Peter Turkson, told Al Jazeera whoever is elected has a colossal job to repair the damage of child sex abuse scandals, leaks and gaffes. We've had a question of credibility badly impaired, badly compromised. We've had all of these challenges. And any Pope who comes in would have to work on re-establishing the credibility of the church where it, you know, where it needs to be so that it can be credibly Listen to incredible exercise leadership in the world. Vatican officials are trying to manage the transition. In doing so, they're now revealing that Pope Benedict started planning his retirement after this visit to Cuba. That was in March last year, much earlier than anyone realized. Certainly the decision um, revealed yesterday was made almost a year ago after the trip to Cuba. And also he went twice, not once but twice, to pray at the tomb of Celestine V, who of course was the last pope to resign. So by praying at the tomb of Celestine V, Benedict was obviously saying, hey, I know what you were feeling when you made your decision. Whatever his thoughts, this pope who had one of the shortest and stormiest reigns in the history of this church has caused alarm inside the Vatican and among more than a billion Catholics around the globe. One Vatican watcher believes there are big problems ahead. Once the new pope is elected, whoever he may be, how can he govern and feel totally free when inside the Vatican there is an ex-pope so authoritative and profound in his thinking as Joseph Ratzinger? The question is, will he really be free to govern? That's one of so many questions raised in the uncharted waters in which the Vatican now finds itself. Pope Benedict is due to make an address on Ash Wednesday, an important date in the Roman Catholic calendar. He'll try to convince people that his decision was right. Whether he's successful remains to be seen. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Rome. Well, for more on the future of the Catholic Church, we're joined now live from Washington, D.C. by Erin Saizana. She is executive director of the Women's Ordination Conference, which advocates a greater leadership role for females in the church. Madam, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Women have a notoriously restricted role in the Catholic Church, pretty much non-existent when it comes to the leadership of the church. What kind of changes do you advocate or at least hope for uh, in the future of the church? You know, um, as the church is now, women really don't have any um, leadership roles um, within the hierarchy of the church. Um, so the people who will be deciding on pope, those are all cardinals, they're all men. Um, and, you know, our hope at the very least is to open dialogue, to open more ways for women to have a say um, in the policies that the Vatican puts out. You know, the Vatican has a seat at the UN. They make a lot of decisions that affect a lot of people, you know, around the globe. but particularly women, and um, as it is right now, none of those things that come out of the Vatican are, you know, supported by women necessarily. They certainly don't have a say um, in the policies that the Vatican puts out. So really, we're really hoping, um, of course, our organization wants women priests, we want women's leaders, um, but we'd be very happy with a pope that's at least willing to speak with us and not silence our people or excommunicate them. Um, I guess the prospect of women priests is very, very far away uh, from any future church uh, right now. Without them being priests, they can't become cardinals. They can't really have a role in the leadership as such. But when it comes to the role of women or the impact of the Catholic Church on women's lives across the world, especially in developing countries what is it that you think that the church could do I'm thinking issues like contraception or divorce that have a direct impact on millions of Catholic women around the world 
Right, we know that the Vatican and the church in general is just very out of touch with the people um, that it ministers to. It does not relate um, to the everyday Catholic woman like myself. Um, it's completely out of touch when it comes to things like contraception. We know that in the United States, 98% of US Catholics have admitted to using some form of birth control. So it's just simply ridiculous um, to not be you know, in touch with the people. Uh, I Forgive me for interrupting. You mentioned there the church isn't in touch with the people, and you mentioned some statistics from the states. There's a big division, though, between perhaps some views held in the states or uh, Western Europe and other views in the developing world. Do you think that maybe the church as it is now is more in touch with the developing world, but not so much with Western countries that perhaps have a slightly more relaxed attitude to some of the teachings of the church? You know, I don't think so. In 2009, the Pope actually had said that um, condoms could make AIDS worse in Africa, and that was such a dangerous statement to make. Uh, he later um, retracted part of that statement and said that um, condoms might be okay in the instance of a male prostitute using them with her partner, but that just goes to show how incredibly out of touch the Pope is with the people. Uh, we're running out of time, but very briefly, if you can, do you yes. hold any hope for the new pope? If there's one thing that you would ask whoever the new pope will be, a realistic request uh, for the next papacy, what would it be? It would be dialogue. Talk to the people uh, you know, in the pews. Talk to the people who belong to your church. Uh, people are leaving the church left and right. Why is that? It's because they're out of touch with the people. Erin Saizana, Executive Director of the Women's Ordination Conference, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. Madam, thank you. Thanks, Barbara.